Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents pastor and evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children, I want to say greetings and welcome everybody to our program today. And we do love the Lord and appreciate Him that He's allowed another privilege of getting to be with you today. And we're going to be taking the saints of God and you listening in and do a message today, especially concerning now our inheritance that Christ has promised to us. If we'll be obedient, we've got a good promises of all of his gifts and things that he's put in the body, which truly is his church. And we just want to thank God and welcome you by radio also and by television here. And just everyone that listens to our programs, and you maybe that cannot get us by cable, but you can get us by radio. I want to announce that if you've got a website or a, I'm sorry, or a internet, you can click on the livingfaithtv.com and they have streaming video. That's one of the stations we're on. And you can click on their website. And they have streaming video. And watch our programs Tuesday through Saturdays at 6.30 in the evening. And children, we just thank God. And especially appreciate the Lord for allowing us to go into homes. And also into hospitals. Nursing homes. And maybe wherever you are, whether in jail. We want you to know that you got a Savior that truly died for us children and He's more willing to set you free and He will if we'll be obedient to Him. And especially today we want to dedicate it to all of God's children. And I'm going to be speaking now a little bit today out of the book of Deuteronomy about the seventh chapter I believe it is. And I want to show you by the good Word of God that God never did children do away with His commandments. And even in the New Testament, in the 14th chapter of the book of St. John, Jesus tells us that if you love me, keep my commandments. And children, I believe definitely we're coming into awakening time. And even though we're entering into great tribulations, and just like Jesus said, the storms are coming, and, and all of these things are happening, we still got a faithful God that will keep His Word with us. And He promised it to a thousands of generations, even from the time of Abraham, even to the law. Children, it's good to know that that great rock that followed them in the wilderness, that rock was our Lord Jesus. And it's good to know He's the same yesterday. Thank God today. And He's forever. And He said, I don't change. So children, you can believe what God said that He will do if we'll be obedient to Him. And today I'm going to ask the saints of God, if you will, to turn with me to the seventh chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And I want to show you that God promised some great blessings upon His people and He was bringing them out of the bondage of Egypt and He led them through the wilderness to try them and prove them to see whether they really would love Him and endure with Him. And you know in the New Testament you can find where Jesus said, He that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. So children, when you're born again, that does not end your trials and temptations and troubles, but it does let you know you got a helper. And that's what the great Holy Ghost is. It's a comforter. It's a helper to us. And thank God it will lead and guide us. And it will use the good word of God, children, to feed you, to bless you. And the more you read and study the Bible, the more you get faith in God because the true faith of God, children, it's not going to come out of traditions which has been built up for centuries. It's not coming out of doctrines of men, but thank God it is coming out of this good Word of God, which the apostles and prophets were inspired of God, and they wrote it unto you and me, and that represents the seed of God. So we're going to let you hear a little bit how God brought His people out of the bondage of Egypt, and when He was about ready to take them into the wilderness and also to the Jordan, he always let them know that if they would listen to him. 
and keep his commandments and his statutes that they would always be considered as a special people to him. But now, there's something we need to really recognize. His own nation of Israel in the Old Testament, they were considered his chosen people. And as far as us Gentiles, we were without a hope and without God. But now children, they begin to give themselves over to idols. They begin to fail to obey the prophets and therefore they ended up scattered all over the world and children, God would lead them out many a time if they were willing and obedient. Now, as far as us people of the New Testament, we are today considered as the chosen people and I'm talking about the born again Christian. Whether you're a Jew, whether you're of any other nation, and if you're born of His Spirit, then we are considered a covenant of the New Testament. And God will work with us. A covenant means agreement. And God will do His part if we're willing to do our part. And I'm going to show you, even in the Old Testament, God said, I'll take sickness from you. And if ever God's little people, we need to understand how to receive our healings, receive our blessings, and to know what God has in store for us. We're going to have to realize, children, God help us all. You're going to have to come out of a lazy spirit. We're going to have to learn you can't slumber, you can't sleep, because that's what's happened with the ten virgins, as Matthew 25 declared. They all slumbered and they slept. Some of them were wise and some of them were foolish. But then when the cry came out that the bridegroom's coming, go out to meet him, then everybody arose and started trimming their lamps. See, your body is a vessel for God. In the New Testament, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And what we need to realize, I know everything God does, He does it by faith. But don't be deceived in thinking that we don't have to work and please God. Bible said without faith it's impossible to please Him. And you remember James said, you show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Now, he gave some examples. Abraham, how that he believed God and he just went out and soldiered in a land that God told him about and he trusted his God and everything that he did was in obedience and God counted that, children, as faith. And Abraham believed God and God accounted it as his righteousness. So children, we don't need to think that we don't have to do nothing because we're born again. Because I'll tell you right now, if you just sit back on a seat of do nothing, not willing to pray, not willing to study and seek God, then we will miss out on a lot of the good blessings. But let me show you now when God was bringing them through the wilderness in the seventh chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, notice this now. And you can read it all, but I'll start at verse about two. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, talking about their enemies, thou shalt smite them and surely, utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. And the Bible said, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. So God didn't want them to get into idolatry and be like the nations and take wives for their children and, and their sons take wives of the heathen nations. God wanted them to keep it in his family. And of course today, we're in the born again experience. But anyway, I want you to notice some things. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it verse 6 here and listen to what the Lord began to tell them. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. 
above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for you were the fewest of all people. Now see, even in the time of Moses and Israel coming out of Egypt, compared to the world, they were a few people that stayed steadfast with God. Now you remember Jesus in the New Testament. Let us know it's not the crowds, it's not the minis of people, but he'll always have a few people that's going to endear. And if you remember in the book of Matthew, I believe the seventh chapter, Jesus said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads unto destruction. And Jesus said, many there be that go in thereat. And he said, narrow is the gate, narrow is the way. Thank God that leadeth unto life. And he said, few there be that find it. So children, it's not the crowds that makes up the kingdom. Most of the time, the real people of God are few compared to the world. And Jesus said, few find it. And you know if he said that, it means that. Now, watch what he said. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep his oath which he sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. See, God's people at that time, Israel, were under under severe bondage of pharaohs. And children, even in the time of Christ, Rome ruled the world, the Caesars, but hurried. He had the rule over the Jews. And a lot of God's people were even in bondage then. And that's why Christ, through his death, delivered them from that fear. And today, the one we need to fear is fear God. Because Jesus said, fear not them that can destroy the body, but after that they can do no more, but rather fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. Now that's our Lord. That's the one we need to fear. And fear don't mean you're scared to death to serve him, but it means you know there's a judgment coming. And Jesus said himself, you love me, you will keep my commandments. So even back in the Old Testament, when they failed him, then they ended up going astray on him. So children don't think because God gives his spirit that we're so free of people that we can live any way we want to, you can't do it. And that's why Paul, in the 10th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, that's why he said many of them in the wilderness failed. 23,000 because of fornication. Some fell into idolatry. And the Lord allowed these to be written as examples that you and me should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. See? And they tempted God in the wilderness and they provoked Him for 40 years. And God said, I was grieved with that generation. So finally God swore in His wrath, His wrath, that they would not enter into His rest. Now, even though the younger people got to go on. Children, as far as you and me, we're not under that Old Testament. But don't let nobody tell you that we don't have to keep the commandments. That we don't have to be willing to serve God and battle to do right. Yes, you do. Because your righteousness is filthy rags. And this is why God gave us His Word that we can put on His righteousness. And when we believe Him and do these things, then you will want to keep His commandments. Now, watch what He told them here. He said, But because the Lord loved you, and because He would keep the oath which He swore unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you with a mighty hand 
and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now listen to verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. Now listen to him. He keeps his covenant with you, his mercy with you, if you love him. Do you know Jesus said for us people today, you're my friends if you do whatever I command you. So see children, when you're born to the Spirit, you must learn to obey that Spirit. A lot of people think when they got saved, they don't have no works. They don't have to keep the commandments. Now I'm not talking about works of the law. But I'm going to tell you, James said, you show me your faith with no works, and I'll show you mine by my works. And we'll get into that a little later, but I want you to hear he's a faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. See, now when did he do away with them? He didn't. Sure, we're not under the ordinances of the law. We're not under the sacrifices. We're not under the, the incense and all the worries of the Sabbaths and these new moons and all. But we're still under the commandments that Jesus gave to us. And it's not hard. It's not grievous if we want to serve Him. Well, listen on. Bible said, which keepeth covenant, God will and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and reproveth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack. Listen now. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Now think about it. This is what God said under the Old Testament. But what about the New Testament? Did Jesus mention hate? <clears throat> he said to the disciples, the apostles, that you shall be hated of all men. Now that ain't talking about God's people. One place said you'd be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And children, they were brought up before rulers and governors. And you know what Jesus told the disciples? Because it's the same for you today and me. He said, if you're ashamed of me and of my words, then I'm going to be ashamed of you. And children, let me tell you something. You better believe Jesus meant it when he said, whosoever will follow me, let him not only deny himself, but whosoever hateth not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, and his own life for my sake in the gospel, he's not worthy of me. Now, them's pretty stern words. That's your Savior telling you. You do need to be obedient unto him. Sure, he's long-suffering. If you get knocked down, he'll pick you up. But children, always remember, sin is a reproach to any people. And if we're going to receive the inheritance and blessings of God, we're going to have to keep His Word. Well, listen to what He said. I'm going to prove all this as we're going along what God tells you. Listen to verse 11. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Now watch. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, God said, if you hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy, thank God, which he swore unto thy fathers. See, children, there's conditions for even the New Testament. I'm going to show you all of this. Now watch. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. 
in the land which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Now listen to verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you or among your cattle. God would always provide. Listen to verse 15. Thank God. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Now I want to stop her for a minute because God said here that he would take away from them if they be obedient, if they keep his commandments and statutes. Now this was even back at the time of the law. And God said he'll take away from them all sickness, all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Now, do you remember when Jesus came to earth, Children, Israel got in a terrible shape, Jerusalem, of disobedience. And all of these good commandments that they failed to obey brought afflictions, brought hardships, brought sicknesses, diseases upon them. Now, let me show you something. The Lord's mercy was extended to them. He came to His own. We know they received him not, but there were some that did, and the ones that received him, then he was going to put in the New Testament and give us power over all the powers of our enemy. But now notice when Jesus come to earth, he know they had forsaken him. They had forsaken the fountains of living waters. They'd hewed themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, containers, that couldn't hold no water. Do you know Isaiah prophesied as God is my helper of His forgiveness, His mercy? Honey, this ain't in the future. If you will, let's go back to Isaiah 35. Children, I've heard them preaching lately that this wilderness and, and the blossoming and all the water in the deserts was representing the natural deserts and land of Israel. Honey, I'm going to tell you better than that. It was talking about the blessings of God, the Holy Ghost, the living waters that had been promised out of Zechariah, out of Joel chapter 2, the great spirit that God was going to send in this earth through the New Testament and the blood of Jesus. Now, if you'll notice in the book of Isaiah, and I want you to remember these things, God said, I'm going to take sickness from you. Now, when Jesus came in the flesh, listen to me close, He allowed His body to take the place of their sins. He was made sin for us who knew no sin. He bare in His body the stripes for our healings, our salvation. And children, as God is my helper, people were bound in sin when Jesus come. So he said, Offerings and sacrifices I've had no pleasure, but a body has thou prepared me. Now children, when Christ came in the flesh, Isaiah said, He bore our infirmities. He was bruised for our iniquities because He knew no sin. We were violent the world had gone into sin. Israel had failed him. And children, God was going to make a new testament, which we're in now. And in this testament, he was going to tear down that middle wall that was differences between the Jews and Gentiles. And he would conclude all under sin so he could have mercy on all. And he died first for his own people, Israel then for the sins of the world, all by giving his life on the cross. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw all men unto me. And what I'm showing you, Isaiah seen his coming in the flesh and fulfilling 
what this prophet Isaiah had foretold was going to come. Now children, they're teaching you that Isaiah 35 is in the future what they call the natural millennium reign or thousand year reign. Honey, as God is my helper, the thousand year ruling of Christ on earth never began in the flesh, but it began in the spirit. When Jesus was lifted up and died, not only did he say, now's the prince of this world cast out, John 12, 31, but he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw all men unto me and thank God his blood would wash them and his stripes would heal them. Children, if they'd believe it, Jew and Gentile. Now, God said here that I'm going to take sickness away if you'll keep my commandments, if you'll obey me. Well, listen. Isaiah seen Jesus coming with power and authority as a lamb to suffer, die, and forgive their sins. And then he could heal them if they'd receive him. All of us can be healed if we receive him. Now, children, I see my time's about up and I'll have to continue in this. So be sure to stay with me. This is very important. Please stay with me. I want to show you out of Isaiah 35 the true victory that God brought to this earth in His body by His stripes, by His dying for our sins. Then He would allow not only the wilderness which represented the house of Israel, but us Gentiles also to have the freedom of God. We were the desert country. We were the place that had no hope or waters. So stay with me, children. I want to show you these things. And truly, we believe in the power of healing. We're seeing it done. And write us, send in your prayer requests, children. We'll do our best to believe with you. So God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. Children, praise the Lord. We thank God again and welcome you back to the program. Appreciate the Lord for everybody that's watching and you by radio that listen in to us in different states. We thank God for you and we hope today's program will be a blessing to you. And especially want to send it out to the people of God everywhere that's facing an hour of temptations and troubles, children, that the word of the Lord doesn't give you the foreknowledge through Christ that we're coming into a time of great tribulation. And even Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24 of all these events that were seen up on earth from earthquakes to pestilences, famines, and all of these waves of the seas are roaring, tsunamis and floods. All of these children is getting greater and greater on us because we're coming to the time that the Lord said,